Hello YouTube. Well, this video was going to be a video about the expedition to Santa Catalina and Santa Cruz Islands in California. Unfortunately, as you can tell, I'm not actually in California at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we had to cancel the trip at the last minute um, because GCWI, whom I was travelling with, had some family commitments at the last minute. But instead, I'm going to be showing you a video which hasn't been on YouTube before. This is GM6UW, which was one of my first expeditions back in 2002 on the Shant and Treshnish Islands. In July 2002, the Cambridge University Wireless Society went to the Hebrides for our annual summer de expedition. After two days travelling and one night under canvas, the trip really started in Alapool, a port town on the west coast of Scotland from where we caught the ferry to the island of Lewis. The ship docked in Stornoway, the island's main town. Apart from Stornoway, Lewis is sparsely populated, with peat bog forming much of the north of the island. Whilst on Lewis, Andrew took us to Duncarlaway, an old defence fort, and also to Callanish, which in many ways is Scotland's answer to Stonehenge. Driving south, the terrain changes, and we entered the more mountainous half of the island, called Harris. We stayed that night in Renigidale, a very beautiful spot on the south coast. The next day, we returned to Stornoway, from where we were taken on a rib to the Sheans. The Sheans are three small islands located to the southeast of Harris, some twenty or so miles from Stornoway. They are privately owned by Adam Nicholson, who inherited them aged twenty-one from his father, and who has written movingly about the islands and their history in his book, Sea Room. As well as a flock of sheep kept by a grazing tenant, there is a house which contains a small bedroom and also a kitchen area on Illantich, the house island, which is where we pitched our tents. The islands have a rich history, going back to the Iron Age, and were once inhabited by families who farmed the fertile land near the shore. The remnants of their houses can still be seen, and have been the subject of much recent archaeological investigation. Today the islands are uninhabited, except for the parties of visitors, such as ourselves, who Adam Nicholson regularly allows to visit. The House Island is the largest, being about a mile long and a quarter mile wide, but its highest point is a few hundred feet above sea level. It is a gentle climb, however, and you are rewarded by fantastic views over the surrounding area from the top. We pitched our tents and the button-up vertical at the back of the house, as the beds were too damp to sleep in and the house regularly suffers from rats. Within hours of arrival, the FT-890 was unpacked and the station set up outside the house. The following day, whilst Andrew worked the big EU pile-up, the 6-metre Yagi was built. Regrettably, 6 metres did not open during the entire trip, and so it was never used. 
Oh, IV3, November, Charlie Charlie, 73. Secure there, Golf Mike 6, Uniform Whiskey Portable, and Echo United 112. Dress on via Mike Zero, Bravo, Lima, Florida. QRZ. Mike 5, Lima X-ray Uniform. Mike 5, Lima X-ray Uniform, 5 and 9. The evenings on the trip were spent operating inside by the fire. Some driftwood was available for this, but we also found that kelp burnt very well, and there was an abundant supply of this on the beach. On Sunday morning, we awoke to weather that was somewhat worse than it had been, but we had been told that it should be calm in time for us to leave the island as planned that evening. Over the Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, relatively few QSOs were made, due to the bands being filled by the IARU contest, but we were treated instead to a view of the cruise ship The World as it made its way from Orkney to the Republic of Ireland. We safely returned to Harris that night, and the next day we were sailing out of Tarbot to the sky, where we camped overnight at Glenbrittel in the Coolin Hills. We did attempt to climb one of these, but we sadly were beaten back by heavy rain. The scenery of the rest of the sky is very different from Lewis and Harris but we had to return to the mainland, to the Ardner Merchen Peninsula, so we could take a ferry to Mull to catch a tourist boat out to the Trushnish Islands. The Trushnish are now managed by the Hebridean Trust and are very easy to visit. In fact, the tourist boat comes here twice a day, but several years of being privately owned by the Rankin family, who allowed few overnight stays, made it a relatively rare European iota reference. Again, the view from the summit over the rest of the Inner Hebrides, rum, egg and muck in particular, is breathtaking, but most people visit for just one thing, the puffins. There are several thousand puffins who breed each summer on these cliffs, and they are well noted for being very tame. Very unusually, we even found a rabbit who shared their burrows. Once again, the station was quickly set up, and with no contest over these weekdays, we were able to build up some nice big pile-ups. Even on our last day, with the tents being packed up around the operator, the pile-up continued. Golf Mike 6, uniform whiskey portable, QRZ. Ending kilowatt again. Ocean kilowatt on Alpha Delta Mike. No, ending kilowatt, the station ending kilowatt again. As we left the Trushnish, we were treated to yet more wildlife. A seal right next to the Tarasmara boat and seemingly trying not to get his tail wet. Soon enough, the mainland was again in sight, and our equipment was soon loaded off the Hoy Lass onto the quayside, and then into the Land Rover. Our final night in Scotland was spent at the Craig Newer campsite. This is the only campsite we'd ever seen, with carpet on the pictures which was too tough for the tent pegs. It has supposedly lovely views across to Fort William and Ben Nevis, but unfortunately, these were obscured by the cloud and drizzle. With the trip now over, analysing the logs reveals a total of some 866 QSOs from the Sheants and 1,716 from the Treshnish. A total of almost 50 DXCC entities were contacted with the best DX from Australia. It was also good to hear a number of new UK Foundation licences and we operated on 40 meters SSB more than in previous years for then.